ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ಓಂ ಆಜ್ಞಾನತಿ ಮಿರಂಧಸ ಜ್ಞಾನಂಜನ ಸಲಾಕಯ ಚಕ್ಷುರೂನ್ ಮೀರಿತ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರವೇ ನಮಃ ಶ್ರೀ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಮನೋಬೀಸ್ತ ಸ್ಥಾಪಿತ ಯೇನ ಭೂತಲೆ ಸ್ವಯಂ ರೂಪ ಕದಾಮಹ್ಯಂ ದರತಿ ಸ್ವಪರಂತಿಕ ವಂದೇಹಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರು ಶ್ರೀಯುತಪತಕಮಲ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುನ್ ವೈಷ್ಣವಂಶ್ಚ ಶ್ರೀರೂಪ ಸಾಗೃಜಾತ ಸಹಗನರಘುನಾಥನ್ವಿತ ಸಜೀವ ಸಾಧ್ವೈತ ಸಾವರೂತ ಪರಿಜನ ಸಹಿತ ಶ್ರೀಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ದೇವ ಶ್ರೀರಾಧಾಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪಾದನ್ ಸಹಗನಲಿತ ಶ್ರೀ ವಿಶಾಖನ್ವಿತ ಹೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕರುಣಾ ಸಿಂಧೋ ದೀನಬಂಧೋ ಜಗತ್ಪತೆ ಗೋಪೇಶ ಗೋಪಿಕಾ ಕಾಂತ ರಾಧಾಕಾಂತ ನಮೋಸ್ತು ತಪ್ತ ಕಾಂಚನ ಗೌರಂಗೀ ರಾಧೆ ವೃಂದಾವನೇಶ್ವರಿ ಪ್ರಿಸಾಬಾನು ಸುತೆ ದೇವಿ ಪ್ರಣಮಿ ಹರಿ ಪ್ರಿಯ ವಾಂಚಕಲ್ಪತರೂಪ್ಯಶ್ಚ ಕೃಪಾ ಸಿಂಧೂಪ್ಯ ಪತೀತ ಪಾವನೆಭ್ಯೋ ವೈಷ್ಣವೇಭ್ಯೋ ನಮೋ ನಮಃ ನಮಂ ವಿಷ್ಣು ಪದಾಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪ್ರೀಸ್ತಯ ಭೂತಲೆ ಶ್ರೀಮತೆ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವೇದಾಂತ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ನಿತಿ ನಾಮಿನೆ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸರಸ್ವತೆ ದೇವೆ ಗೌರವಾಣಿ ಪ್ರಚಾರಿಣೆ ನಿರ್ವಿಶೇಷ ಶೂನ್ಯವಾದಿ ಪಾಶದ್ದಾಯ ದೇಶತಾರಿಣೆ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭು ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಅದ್ವೈತಾತ್ ಗದಾಧರ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಪಾಸಾದಿ ಗೌರಭಕ್ತ ವೃಂದ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ ಹರೇ ರಿಬೋ ಓಕೆ ಸೊ ಟುಡೇ ವಿ ರೀಡ್ ದ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಥರ್ಟಿ ಒನ್ ದ ಕಿಡ್ನಾಪಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ಸುಭದ್ರ ಅಂಡ್ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ವಿಸಿಟಿಂಗ್ ಶ್ರುತ ದೇವ ಅಂಡ್ ಬ ಬಹುಲಾಶ್ವ ಸೊ ಹರಿಬೋ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ಹಿಯರಿಂಗ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇನ್ಸಿಡೆಂಟ್ ಕಿಂಗ್ ಪರೀಕ್ಷಿತ್ became more inquisitive to hear about Krishna and his pastimes, and thus he inquired from Shukadev Goswami how his grandmother, Subhadra, was kidnapped by his grandfather, Arjuna, at the instigation of Lord Krishna. King Parikshit was very much eager to learn about his grandfather's kidnapping and marriage of his grandmother. Thus Shukadev Goswami began to narrate the story as follows. Once upon a time, your grandfather, Arjuna, the great hero, was visiting several holy places of pilgrimage. And while he was thus traveling all over, he happened to come to the Prabhasakshetra. In the Prabhasakshetra, he heard the news that Lord Balaram was negotiating the marriage of Subhadra, the daughter of Arjuna's maternal uncle, Vasudeva. Although her father, Vasudeva, and her brother, Krishna, were not in agreement with him, Balaram was in favor of marrying Subhadra to Duryodhana. Arjuna, however, desired to gain the hand of Subhadra. As he thought of Subhadra and her beauty, Arjuna became more and more captivated with the idea of marrying her, and with a plan in mind, he dressed himself like a Vaishnav sannyasi, carrying a tridanda in his hand. The Mayavadi sannyasis take one danda or one rod, whereas the Vaishnav sannyasis take three danda or three rods. The three rods or three danda indicate that a Vaishnav sannyasi vows to render service to the Supreme Personality of Godhead by his body, mind, and words. The system of three danda sannyas has been in existence for a long time, and the Vaishnav sannyasis are called three dandis, or sometimes three dandi swamis, or, or three dandi goswamis. Sannyasis are generally meant to travel all over the country for preaching work. But during the four months of the rainy season in India, from September to December, they do not travel but take shelter in one place and remain there without moving. This mo- non-movement of the sannyasi is called Chaturmasya Vrata. When a sannyasi stays in a place for four months, the local inhabitants of that place take advantage of his presence to become spiritually advanced. Arjuna, in the dress of a Tridandi sannyasi, remained in the city of, Adva- of Dvaraka for four months. Devising a plan whereby he could get Subhadra as his wife, the inhabitants of Dvaraka as well as Lord Balaram could not recognize the sannyasi to be Arjuna. Therefore, all of them offered their respects and obeisances to the sannyasi 
without knowing the actual situation. One day Lord Balaram invited this particular sannyasi to lunch at his home. Balaramji very respectfully offered him all kinds of palatable dishes and the so-called sannyasi was eating sum sumptuously. While eating at the home of Balaramji, Arjuna was simply looking over beautiful Subhadra, who was very en enchanting even to the great heroes and kings. Out of her love for her, Arjuna, Arjuna's eye brightened and he began to see her with glittering eyes. Arjuna decided that somehow or other he would achieve Subhadra as his wife and his mind became agitated on account of this strong desire. Arjuna, the grandfather of Maharaj Parikshit, was himself extraordinarily beautiful, and his bodily structure was very much attractive to Subhadra. Subhadra also decided within her mind that she would accept only Arjuna as her husband. As a simple girl, she was smiling with great pleasure, looking at Arjuna. Thus Arjuna also became more and more attracted by her, in this way, Subhadra dedicated herself to Arjuna, and he resolved to marry her by any means. He then became absorbed 24 hours a day in the thought of how he could get Subhadra as his wife. He was afflicted with the thought of getting Subhadra and had not a moment's peace of mind. Once upon a time, Subhadra, seated on a chariot, came out of the palace fort to see the gods in the temple. Arjuna took this opportunity and with the permission of Vasudeva and Devaki, he kidnapped her. After getting on Subhadra's chariot, he prepared himself for a fight, taking up his bow and holding off with his arrows the soldiers ordered to check him. Arjuna took Subhadra away. While Subhadra was being thus kidnapped by Arjuna, her relatives and family members began to cry but still he took her just as a lion takes his share and departs. When it was disclosed to Lord Balaram that the so-called sannyasi was Arjuna and that he had planned such a device simply to take away Sub Subhadra and that he had actually taken her, he became very angry, just as the waves of the ocean became agitated on a full moon day. Lord Balaram became greatly disturbed. Hare Krishna. Anyone can continue reading. Hare Bo. in favor of Arjuna. Therefore, along with other members of the family, he tried to pacify Balarama by falling at his feet and begging him to pardon Arjuna. Lord Balarama was then convinced that Supatra was attached to Arjuna and he became pleased to know that she wanted Arjuna as her husband. The matter was settled and in order to please the newly married couple, Lord Balarama arranged to send a dowry consisting of an abundance of riches elephants, chariots, horses, servants, and maidservants. Maharaja Parikshit was very anxious to hear more about Krishna, and so after finishing the narration of Arjuna's kidnapping, Supatra Shukadeva Goswami began to narrate another story as follows. There was a householder Brahmana in the city of Mithila, the capital of, capital of the kingdom of Videha. This Brahmana, whose name was Shruta Deva was a great devotee of Lord Krishna. Due to his being fully Krishna conscious and always engaged in the service of the Lord, he was completely peaceful in mind and detached from all material attraction. He was very learned and had no other desire than to be fully situated in Krishna consciousness. Although in oh now although in the order of householder life, he never took great pains to earn anything for his livelihood. He was satisfied with whatever he could achieve without much endeavor, and somehow or other he lived in that way. <clears throat> Every day he would get necessities for life in just the quantity required, and not more. That was his destiny. The Brahmana had no desire to get more than what he needed, and thus he was peacefully executing the regulative principles of a Brahmana's life, as enjoined in the revealed scriptures. Fortunately, the king of Mithila was as good a devotee as the Brahmana. The name of this famous king was Bahulashva. He was very well established in his reputation as a good king, and he was not at all ambitious to extend his kingdom for the sake of sense gratification. 
As such, both the Brahman and King Bahulashva remained pure devotees of Lord Krishna and Mithila. Since Lord Krishna was very merciful upon these two, two devotees, King Bahulashva and the Brahmana, Shruta Deva, he, he one day asked his driver, Daruka, to take his chariot in the capital city of Mithila. Lord Krishna was accompanied by the great sages, sages Narada Var, Vamadeva, Atri Vyasa Deva, Parasurama, Asita Aruni, Rihaspati, Kanva Maitreya, Shyavana, and others. Lord Krishna and the sages were passing through many villages and towns, and everywhere the citizens would receive them with great respect and offer them articles in worship. <clears throat> when the citizens came to see the Lord and all of them assembled together in one place, it seemed that the sun was present along with his various satellite planets. In that journey, Lord Krishna and the sages passed through the kingdom of Anartha, Tanva, Guru Changala, Kanga, Matsya, Panchala, Kunti, Masu, Kekaya, Koshala, and Arna. And thus all the citizens of these places, both men and women, could see Lord Krishna eye to eye. In this way, they enjoyed celestial happiness with open hearts full of love and affection for the Lord. And when they saw the face of the Lord, it seemed to them that they were drinking nectar through, through their eyes. <clears throat> when, they, when, they, when they saw Krishna, all the ignorant misconceptions of their lives dissipated. When the Lord passed through the various countries and the people came to visit him, Simply by glancing over them, the Lord could bestow all good fortune upon them and liberate them from all kinds of ignorance. In some places, the demigods also would join with the human beings, and their glorification of the Lord would claim all directions of all inauspicious things. In this way, Lord Krishna slowly and gradually reached the kingdom of Vita. When the news of the Lord's arrival was received by the citizens, they all felt unlimited happiness and came to welcome him, taking gifts in their hands to offer. As soon as they saw Lord Krishna, their hearts immediately blossomed in transcendental bliss, just as a lotus flower blooms uh, on the rising of the sun. Previously, they had simply heard the names of the great sages, but had never seen them. Now, by the mercy of Lord Krishna, they had the opportunity of seeing both the great sages and the Lord himself. King Bahulashva, as well as the Brahmana, Shrutadeva, knowing well that the Lord had come there just to grace them with favor, immediately fell at the Lord's lotus feet and offered their respects. With folded hands, the king and the Brahmana each simultaneously invited Lord Krishna and all the sages to his home. In order to please both of them, Lord Krishna uh, expanded himself into two and went to the houses of each one of them. Yet neither the king nor the Brahmana would understand that the Lord had gone to the house of the other. Both, both thought that the Lord had gone only to his own house. That he, that he and his companions were present in both houses, although both the Brahmana and the king thought he was present in his, in his house only, is another opulence of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. This opulence is described in the revealed scriptures as Vaipava Prakasha. Similarly, when Lord Krishna married 16,000 wives, he also expanded himself into 16,000 forms, each one of them as powerful as he himself. Similarly, similarly in Vrindavana, when Brahma stole away Krishna's cows, calves, and cowherd boys, Krishna expanded himself into many new cows, calves, and cowherd boys. Bahulashva, the king of Videha, was very intelligent and was a perfect gentleman. He was astonished that so many great sages, along with the Supreme Personality of Godhead, were personally, personally present in his home. He knew perfectly well that the conditioned soul, especially when engaged in worthy affairs, cannot be a hundred percent pure, whereas the Supreme Personality of Godhead and, and his pure devotees are always transcendental to worldly contamination. Therefore, he, when he found that the Supreme Personality of Godhead Krishna and all the great sages were at his home, he was astonished and he began to thank Lord Krishna for his causeless mercy. Feeling very much obliged and wanting to receive his quest 
to the best of his capacity. He called for nice chairs and cushions, and Lord Krishna, along with all the sages, sat down, sat down very comfortably. At that time, King Bahulasva's mind was very restless, not because of any problems, but because of great ecstasy of love and devotion. His heart was filled with love and affection for the Lord and his associates, and his eyes were filled with tears of ecstasy. He arranged to wash the feet of his divine guests, and after washing them, he and his family members sprinkled the water on their own heads. After this, he offered to the guest nice flower garlands, sandalwood, wood, pulp, incense, new garments, ornaments, lamps, cows, and bulls. In a mar manner just befitting his royal position, he worshipped each one of them in this way. When all had been fed sumptuously and were sitting very comfortably, Bahulashva came before Lord Krishna and caught, caught his lotus feet. He placed them on his lap and while massaging the feet with his hands, began to speak about the glories of the Lord in a, in a sweet voice. <clears throat> <clears throat> My dear Lord, you are the super soul of all living entities, and as witness within the heart, are cognizant of everyone's activities. As such, being duty bound, we always think of your lotus feet so that we can remain in a secu secure position without deviating from your eternal service. As a result of our continuous rem remembrance of your lotus feet, you, you have kindly visited my place personally to favor me with your cause of mercy. We have heard, my dear Lord, that by your various statements, you confirm, confirm your pure devotees to be more dear to you than Lord Balarama or your constant servitor, the goddess of fortune. Your devotees are dearer to you than your for, first son, Lord Brahma, and I am sure that you have so kindly visited my place in order to prove your divine statement. I cannot imagine how people can be godless and demoniac even after knowing of your causes, mercy and affection for your devotees who are constantly engaged in Krishna consciousness. How can they forget your lotus feet? My dear Lord, it is known to us that you are so kind and liberal that when a person leaves everything just to engage in Krishna consciousness, you sometimes give yourself in exchange for that, for that an, an, an alloyed service you have appeared in the Yadu dynasty to fulfill your mission of reclaiming all conditioned souls rotting in the sinful activities of material existence. And this appearance is already famous all over the world. Hari Paul, someone. In? Sorry about the background, I'm outside. Hare Krishna Prabhu, please accept my humble obeisance as all glory to Prabhupada. Thank you, Hare Prabhu, for reading. And Yes, anyone can continue. Haribo. My dear. Anja Prabhu, Hare Krishna, you can continue. Okay, Hare Krishna. My dear Lord, uh, you are the ocean of unlimited mercy, love, and affection. Your transcendental form is full of bliss, knowledge, and eternity. You can attract everyone's heart by your beautiful form as Shyama Sundara Krishna. Your knowledge is unlimited, and to teach all people how to execute devotional service, you have sent your incarnation, Nara Narayana, who is engaged in severe austerities and penances and Badari, Badari Narayana, Bandari Narayana. Kindly, therefore, accept my humble obeisance at your lotus feet. My dear Lord, I beg to request you and your companions, the great sages and brahmanas, to remain at my place so that its family of the famous king Nimi may be sanctified by the dust of your lotus feet at least for a few days. Lord Krishna could not refuse the request of his devotee, and thus he remained there for a few days along with the sages in order to sanctify the city of Mithila and all its citizens. Meanwhile, the Brahmana, simultaneously receiving Lord Krishna and his associates at his home, became transcendently overwhelmed with joy. After offering his guests nice sitting places, the Brahmana began to dance, throwing his wrap around his body. Shruta Deva, being not at all rich, offered only 
mattresses, wooden planks, straw carpets, etc. to his distinguished distinguished guests, Lord Krishna and the sages, but he welcomed them uh, to his best capacity. He began to speak very highly of the Lord and the sages, and he and his wife washed the feet of each one of them. After this, he took the water and sprinkled it over all the members of his family, and all the, it appeared that the Brahman was very poor. He was at that time most fortunate. While Sri Tadeva was welcoming Lord Krishna and his associates, he simply forgot himself in transcendental joy. After welcoming the Lord and his companions, uh, according to his capacity, he brought fruits, incense, scented water, scented clay, tulsi leaves, cushion straw, and lotus flowers. They were not very costly items and could be secured very easily, but because they were offered with devotional love, Lord Krishna and his associates accepted them very gladly. The Brahmana's wife cooked very simple foods like rice and dal, and Lord Krishna and all his followers were very, were very pleased to accept them because they were offered in devotional love. When Lord Krishna and his associates were fed in this way, the Brahmana Shruta Deva was thinking thus, I am falling into the deep dark well of householder life and am the most unfortunate person. How has it become possible that Lord Krishna, who is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and his associates, the great sages, whose very presence makes a place as sanctified as the pilgrimage site, have agreed to come to my place? While, uh, while the Brahmana was thinking in this way, the guests finished their lunch and sat back very comfortably. At that time, the Brahmana Shrutadeva and his wife, children, and other relatives appeared there to render service to the distinguished guests. While touching the lotus feet of Lord Krishna, the Brahmana began to speak. My dear Lord, he said, you are the supreme person, Purushottama, situated transcendentally to the manifested and unmanifested material creation. The activities of this material world and of the conditioned soul have nothing to do with your position. We can appreciate, we can appreciate that it is not that only today you have given me your audience. You are associating with all the living entities as Paramatma since the beginning of creation. This statement of the Brahman is very instructive. It is a fact that the Supreme Lord Personality of Godhead in his Paramatma feature entered, um, entered the creation of this material world as Maha Vishnu, Garbhata Gashaya Vishnu and Kshirada Gashaya Vishnu and in, every, and in a very friendly attitude, the Lord is sitting along with the conditioned soul in the body. Therefore, every living entity has the Lord with him uh, from the very beginning, but due to his mistaken consciousness of life, the living entity cannot understand this. When his consciousness is, however, changed into Krishna consciousness, he can immediately understand how Krishna is trying to assist the conditioned soul to get out of the material entanglement. Hare, well, anyone can continue next. Shruta Deva continues, My dear Lord, we have entered the whole world as a sleep as in a sleeping condition. The condition soul while sleeping creates false and temporary worlds. He becomes busy in many mystery activities, and perhaps becoming a king, sometimes being murdered, or sometimes being later in unknown seconds. And all these are simply temporary affairs. Similarly, the last year could be also in sleeping condition enters this material world to create a temporary manifestation, not for your personal necessity, but for the conditioned souls who want to initiate your worship or in the enjoyment. The conditioned soul's enjoyment in this material world is temporary and individual, and yet the conditioned soul is by itself unable to create such temporary situation for this universe. Illusionary joy and enjoyment. In order to fulfill our desires, although they are temporary and illusory, we enter this temporary manifestation to help him. Thus, from the beginning of this condition, soul entering into the material world, you are his constant companion. And therefore, the condition soul becomes, comes in contact with the real deity and takes to the business. Learning from the process of hearing your complaints and pastimes, glorifying your residential activities, worshipping your eternal form in the temple, 
offering prayers to you and engaging in discussion to understand your fundamental position. To then gradually becomes free from the contamination of material existence. His heart becomes cleansed of all material dust, and thus gradually you become visible in the heart of the world. Although you are constantly mentally with the condition soul, and even you become transformed. His heart becomes drenched of all material dust, and thus gradually you become visible in the heart of the devotee. Although you are constantly with the conditioned soul, only when he becomes purified by devotion service do you become revealed to him. Others who are bewildered by votive activities, either by Vedic injunction or customary dealings, and who do not take to devotion service, become captivated by the external happiness of the bodily concept of life. You are not revealed to such persons. Rather, you remain far, far away from them. But for one who, being engaged in your devotional service, has purified his heart by constant chanting of your holy name, you become very easily understood as his eternal constant companion. It is said that your lordship, sitting in the heart of a devotee, gives his di direction by which he... Can I scroll on to... Gives it, he gives him direction by which he can very quickly come back to home, back to God, back to you. This direct dictation by you reveals your existence within the heart of the devotee. Only a devotee can immediately appreciate your existence within his heart. Whereas for a person who has only a bodily concept of life and is engaged in sense gratification, who always remain covered by the curtain of yoga maya. Such a person cannot realize that you are very near, sitting within his heart. For a non-devotee, you are appreciated only as ultimate death. The difference is like the difference between a cat carrying its kittens in its mouth and a cat carrying a rat in its mouth. In the mouth of the cat, the rat feels its death, whereas the kittens in the mouth of the cat feel motherly affection. Similarly, you are present to everyone, but the non-devotees feel you as ultimate cruel death, whereas a, for a devotee, you are the supreme instructor and philosopher. The atheist, therefore, understands the presence of God as death. But the devotee understands the presence of God always within her, within his heart, takes dictation from you, and lives transcendently, not being affected by the contamination of the material world. You are the supreme controller and superintendent of the material nature's activities. The atheistic class of men simply observe the activities of material nature, but cannot find you as the original background. A devotee, however, can immediately see your hands in every movement of material nature. The curtain of Yogamaya cannot cover the eyes of the devotee of your lordship but it can cover the eyes of the non-devotee. The non-devotee is unable to see you eye to eye, just as a person whose eyes are interrupted by the covering of a cloud cannot see the sun. Although persons who are flying above the cloud can see the sunshine brilliantly as it is. My dear Lord, I offer my respectful obeisances unto you. My dear self, our effulgent Lord, I am your eternal servitor. Therefore, kindly order me, what can I do for you? The conditioned soul feels the pang of material contamination as long as you are not visible to him, and as soon as you are visible by development of Krishna consciousness, all mysteries of material existence simultaneously become vanquished. Rebo, okay, who wants to be next? It's my turn then. The Supreme Personality of God at Krishna is naturally very much affectionately inclined to his devotees. When he heard Shruta Deva's prayers of pure devotion, he was very much pleased and immediately caught his hand and began to address, address him thus. My dear Shruta Deva, 
All these great sages and saintly persons have been very kind to you by your personally coming here to see you. You should consider this opportunity to be great fortune for you. They are so kind that they are traveling with me, and wherever they go, they immediately make the whole atmosphere as pure as transcendence simply by the touch of the dust of their feet. People are ac accustomed to go to the temples of the god. They also visit holy places of pilgrimage, and after prolonged association with such activities for many days by touch and by worship, gradually they become purified. But the influence of great sages and saintly persons is so great that by seeing them, one immediately becomes completely purified. Moreover, the very purifying potency of pilgrimage, pilgrimages or worship of different demigods is also achieved by the grace of saintly persons. A pilgrimage site becomes a holy place because of the presence of the saintly persons there. My dear Shruta Deva, when a person is born as a Brahmana, he immediately becomes the best of all human beings. And if such a Brahmana, remaining self-satisfied, practices austerities, studies the Vedas and engages in my devotional service, as is the duty of the Brahmana, or in other words, if a Brahmana becomes a Vaishnava, how wonderful is his greatness. My feature of four-handed Narayana is not so pleasing or dear to me as is a Brahmana Vaishnava. Brahmana means one well conversant with Vedic knowledge. A Brahmana is the insignia of perfect knowledge, and I am the full-fledged manifestation of all gods. The less intelligent class of man do not understand me as the highest knowledge, nor do they understand the influence of the Brahman Vaishnava. They are influenced by the three modes of material nature and thus dare to criticize me and my pure devotees. A Brahmana Vaishnav or a devotee already on the Brahminical platform can realize me within his heart and therefore he definitely concludes that the whole cosmic manifestation and its different features are effects of different energies of the Lord. Thus he has clear conception of the whole material nature and the total material energy and in every action such a devotee sees me only and nothing else my dear shruta deva you may therefore accept all these great descendi great saintly persons brahmanas and sages as my bona fide representatives by worshiping them faithfully you will be worshiping me more diligently i consider worship of my devotees to be better than the direct worship of me if someone attempts to worship me directly without worshipping my devotees, I do not accept such worship, even though it may be presented with a great opulence. In this way, both the Brahmana, Shruta Deva, and the king of Mithila, under the direction of the Lord, worshipped both Krishna and his followers, the great sages and saintly Brahmanas, on an equal level of spiritual importance. Both Brahmana and king ultimately achieved the supreme goal, of being transferred to the spiritual world. The devotee does not know anyone except Lord Krishna, and Krishna is most affectionate to his devotee. Lord Krishna remained in Mithila, both at the house of the Brahmana, Shruta Deva, and at the palace of King Bahush Bahulashva. And after favoring them lavishly by his transcendental instructions, he went back to his capital city, Dvaraka. The instruction we receive from this incident is that King Bahulashva and Shruta Deva, the Brahmana, were accepted by the Lord on the same level because both were pure devotees. This is the real qualification for being recognized by the Supreme Personality of Godhead because it has become the fashion of this age to become falsely proud of having taken birth in the family of a Kshatriya or of a Brahmana. We see persons without any qualification other than a birth claiming to be Brahmana or Kshatriya or Vaishya. But as it is stated in the scriptures, Kalao Shudra Sambhava, in this age of Kali, everyone is a Shudra. This is because there is no performance of the purificatory process known as Samskaras, which begin from the time of the mother's pregnancy and continue up to the point of the individual's death. No one can be classified as a member of a particular caste, especially of a higher caste, Brahmana Kshatriya Vaishya, simply by birthright. If one is not purified by the process of the seed-giving ceremony or Garbada, Garba, Garbadana sam, Samskara, he is immediately classified amongst the Shudras. 
because only the Shudras do not undergo this purificatory process. Sex life without the purificatory process of Krishna consciousness is merely the seed-giving process of the Shudras or the animals. But Krishna consciousness is the highest perfection by which everyone can come to the platform of a Vaishnava. This includes having all the qualifications of a Brahmana. The Vaishnavas are trained to become freed from the four kinds of sinful activities, illicit sex, indulgence in, to in intoxicants, gambling, and eating animal foodstuffs. No one can be on the Brahminical platform without having these preliminary qualifications, and without becoming a qualified Brahmana, one cannot become a pure devotee. Thus ends the Bhaktivedanta purport of the second volume, 31st chapter of Krishna, the kidnapping of Shubhadra, and Lord Krishna's visiting Shrutadeva and Bahulashva. Oh, this is a huge chapter. Oh. Yeah, that's pretty big. <laughs> yeah, that's the longest chapter, I think, in this book. <laughs> How can it... It's endless. Yeah, I think the first two chapters are the most large. At least in, Shrima, at least in the Srimad Bhagavatam, I remember. Because Srila oh. Prabhupada gave such long purports to those chapters 304 yes we need many reading sessions for this one chapter yeah it's 60 pages 16 60 60 wow yeah <laughs> it's still 240 and it goes to 306 yeah, but yeah, if somebody will read this by on his own, it will take maybe one hour. Yeah. Okay, next time we'll start this chapter. Able. Okay, let's read Chicks Vasta Gumpers. Cheto darpana marjanam bava maha davagni nirvapanam shreyah kairava chandrika vitaranam vidyava du jivanam anandam budivartanam pratipadam putnam ditasvadanam sarvatmasnapanam param vijayate sri krishna sankirtanam Namna makari bahutani jisarva shaktis tatrar pitani amitak smarane nakalaha eta drishita vakripa bhagavan mamapi durdaiva midrisha mihajani na nuragaha. Tenada pisa ni chena karura pisa ni chena Janam Nasundarin, Kavitamba, Jagadisha Kame, Mutsan, Manijan, Manishare, Bavada, Doctora, Hey to Ayin and the Tanujak, Ingaram, Patitam, Bishame, Bavam, Budo, Kripa, Tavapada, Pankajas, Titadulis, other Sambichintaya Nainam Galada Shudharaya, but Ganam Sarivadanam get Gadarudhayagira. Glory to this Sri Krishna Sankirtana, which cleanses the heart of all the dust accumulated for years and extinguishes the fire of conditional life, of repeated birth and death. This Sankirtana movement is the prime benediction for humanity at large, because it spreads the rays of the benediction moon. It is the life of all transcendental knowledge. It increases the ocean of transcendental bliss, and it enables us to fully taste the nectar for which we are always anxious. Oh my Lord, your holy name alone can render all benediction to living beings, and thus you have hundreds and millions of names, like Krishna and Govinda. In these transcendental names, you have invested all your transcendental energies. There are not even hard and fast rules for chanting these names. Oh my Lord, 
Out of kindness, you enable us to easily approach you by your holy names. But I am so unfortunate that I have no attraction. One should chant the holy name of the Lord in a humble state of mind, thinking oneself lower than the straw in the street. One should be more tolerant than a tree, devoid of all sense of false prestige, and should be ready to offer all respect to others. In such a state of mind, one can chant the holy name of the Lord constantly. Almighty Lord, I have no desire to accumulate wealth, nor do I desire beautiful women, nor do I want any number of followers. I only want your causeless devotional service birth after birth. O oh, son of Maharaj Nanda Krishna, I am the eternal servitor. That somehow or other, I have fallen into the ocean of birth and death. Please pick me up from this ocean of death and place me as one of the atoms. Oh, oh, okay, you can go. You can read if you want. Wasn't it the sixth one? Oh Lord, when you will, when will my eyes be decorated with the tears of love flowing continuously when I chant your holy name? When will my voice soak up and when will my hair of my body stand and at the end of the creation of creation of your name. Oh, Govinda, your separation I consider a moment like, a moment to be like 12 years or more. Tears are for, flowing from my eyes like a torrent of rain and I am feeling all vacant in the world of your absence. I know no one but Krishna as my Lord. He shall remain so even if I handle him roughly by his embarrassment. Or he makes me heartbroken by not giving present before me. He is completely free to do anything and everything. Or for he is always my worshipful, worshipful Lord unconditionally. If anyone receives or hears these eight verses of instructions by the Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he is uh, six love and devotions for the Krishna and Krishna's day by day. Hare Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Kijai, Krishna Jai, Jagat Kurushla Bhakti Swami Hari Hari Bo.